Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink and the latest color throwdown challenge just went live and this was the card I made for the challenge. So I started with the Mama Elephant Organic Blooms stamp set. I showed this in a haul not too long ago. The stamp set's only been out for not very long and I bought it the second I saw it. It was just so, so pretty. My first initial thought with this was no line watercolor would look absolutely phenomenal with it, but I knew I didn't have time for that today. So instead I am using some Distress watercolor cardstock and I coated it with my anti-static powder tool. And then I am lining it up using my mini Misty, which is a good thing I did. Um, normally you could just stamp this with just a regular, you know, um, like my Fisker's little Fisker stamp press or whatever, but because the stamp was so large, I had a feeling I wouldn't get it stamped perfectly and I didn't, but I stamped it with Versamark ink. And then I'm again, my initial thought as well was I was like, Oh, I'll emboss it with white and then do watercolor. Cause that will look gorgeous as well. But then I was like, you know what? I got that liquid platinum embossing powder from Ranger forever ago and I rarely use it and it's so pretty. And the color combo for this challenge is perfect for it. So I use that instead and oh, it's just gorgeous. And I missed a couple spots when I initially stamped this. So I lined it back up in my Misty because I didn't remove the stamp. And I just inked up those little areas that I had missed again with my Versamark ink. And then recoated them with the embossing powder. And then reheated um, again to melt that embossing powder. And it's good. So I also stamped. There's a little like cluster of leaves stamp that comes with this and a little bud and I just stamped those on the top right there it just seemed a little empty so inked those up and stamped them I had gotten the way there for a second and embossed them as well and I've been showing it a lot lately like heat embossing and watercoloring just because it just makes your life easier <laughs> having the raised edges you can go so much faster honestly this entire image I did in maybe 10 minutes a little bit longer than that um yeah I grabbed several different distress colors to get the colors I wanted, mostly the darker pink shade for the challenge. So I ended up mixing um, some picked raspberry, a little bit of aged mahogany, and then Victorian velvet. And I was just squishing my little ink pads onto the stamp packaging, and it just, that works as my palette. So I mixed up those three colors to create my darker shade of pink, and then I'm just picking them up with my water brush, and I super sped this up because otherwise the video would just be too long to even for me to even upload. But I just laid down the color, like pretty much just scribbled it on. I didn't do anything fancy. And honestly, just looking at it now, I could have just left it like that. It just, the way the color, like distressings, when they react with their own, like the distress watercolor paper, it just works. Like you don't have to put a whole lot of effort into it. And it, you know, you get these different depths of color and it's just fun so and yeah with the embossing it makes it even easier because you don't really have you know the colors aren't running into each other you don't have to worry about areas drying um I wasn't super perfect with it I did go over the lines here and there but I just went with it it worked and as those areas dried I did go back over it this is where I went over a second time just to kind of deepen it up a bit I didn't need to do this but I wanted to and it still worked so I watercolored in all the areas and then I was using that, I used the pumice stone on some of it and then um, shabby shutters for my leaves and that. And then I um, squeezed my little water brush onto the pumice stone to water it down a fair bit and just quickly kind of went around the edges just to give it that a tiny bit of shading, but not much. And then because like, and another kick I'm on lately is like add shimmer to everything. I pulled out my clear wink of Stella this time and I didn't want to coat. I thought for a second about coating flowers with like straight up wink of Stella, but I knew that would like, that would obscure a lot of the detail and make it super shimmery. I wanted shimmer, but I didn't want it to be too crazy. So I squeezed the wink of Stella onto that stamp packaging as well. And I just picked it up with my water brush. So I was able to get some shimmer, but not super, super intense. And it just gave it just a nice light amount of shimmer, like so pretty. And when I was done, I just scribbled my water brush onto the paper towel like I always do. And it just cleans up the shimmer, no problem. And you can just see, it just gives it this really, really pretty sparkle. And that's the nice thing too with the Wink of Stella is it, when the light isn't shining directly on it, it looks almost flat. Like you can't even really see the shimmer very well. And then when the light hits it, you just get this like pop of sparkle. So once I was happy with that, I decided to trim off the right hand side. I trimmed off about half an inch off the right hand side. And then I grabbed this striped pattern paper. This is from the My Favorite Things Painted Prints Smitten Pack. 
and the gray pattern that went really well with this challenge and I just I had it in my head well, even when I started this card I was like I need to add a gray striped pattern paper do I have a gray striped pattern paper oh yeah I've got multiples <laughs> so I trimmed a piece of that down and then I took that piece I trimmed off the watercolor cardstock and trimmed just a tiny little strip of that and pulled out the stamp packaging yet again just so I had um a clean surface to do this on so that I don't get Versamark all over my craft mat and forget about it. And then I just coated that with my Versamark ink so it's all completely covered and sticky and then used that liquid platinum embossing powder again and coated it with that, heated it with my heat tool, being careful not to, you know, burn my fingers in the process. And then once I got the one side heated, I flipped it around and coated the other side. So then I've got this perfect little metallic strip that obviously matches the embossing I did on the main image. I just thought it would kind of finish it off a little bit from, um, it just looked too plain, the watercolor panel going straight to the straight pattern paper on my card front, in my head anyway. <laughs> so once I was done all that, I funneled the embossing powder back into the container. I made the mistake not too long ago of not doing that and ended up knocking over my coffee filter and I had embossing powder everywhere. So funneled it back in, put the lid back on, and then my card base is heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11, and I scored it at five and a half with my Teflon bone folder. So it is a standard A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I opened it up and put it back in my mini Misty here, and then relined up this main image so it was more centered on the inside of the card. And then I just inked it up with the same pumice stone ink, um, distress ink. And like I've said in previous videos, I don't worry so much about getting a perfect stamping. I just use the mini misty because I was already using it. It was right there. But when I'm stamping on the inside of the cards, I don't need it to be perfect, like perfectly inked up, perfectly stamped because it's on the inside and you know, it's going to get written over. Um, it's more, it's decoration. So I stamped it and then um, I grabbed one of the sentiments from the Organic Bloom stamp set and lined that up with my Misty and I inked it up with Hero Arts Black Ink and it stamped perfectly right off the bat so that was really nice. And then I just grabbed a scrap of some smooth white cardstock and grabbed another sentiment from the set and did the same thing, inked it up and stamped that onto the cardstock. And I'm going to pull that out and then I'm just going to trim it down with scissors. Super, super simple. Um, decided to leave a little bit of a border. I kind of thought about like trimming it straight up so it looked more like a label. But instead I cut it with that little bit of border just to give it um, that little extra something. So to adhere my card, I decided to adhere everything flat to my card. No foam tape this time. So I adhered the pattern paper first flat to the card and then a tiny little bit hung over. So I just flipped it over and trimmed that off with my scissors. And then I used a generous amount of adhesive on the watercolor piece because it warped just a little bit with the heat embossing and the watercoloring. So to make sure it adhered flat to the card, I um, applied quite a bit of my ATG adhesive and then pressed that down really, really well. And another reason I decided to put this all flat was because I'm adding this little tiny strip here. And if I'd put everything on foam tape, it would have made it more difficult to adhere this. So once I had everything adhered, I adhered the little strip. I just used my um, multimedia matte adhesive and ran a thin line of that right down this little tiny strip of paper and then press that into place and then let that sit and dry. And then the sentiment, I decided to pop that up with just a little bit of foam tape. So I adhered two little tiny pieces of foam tape to that, peeled off the backing and adhered that into place. And as always, you guys know me and my obsession with sequins. <laughs> I had to add a few. So I grabbed my Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear Mix sequins and just pretty much used at least one of every size in that mix. And placed them where I wanted them first on the card and then added the little dabs of the multi-medium matte adhesive to adhere them into place and that finished off the card. So if you are interested in any of the supplies used I will have them linked directly below the video in the description box below. There will be a link to my blog post with all of these pictures posted as well as picture links to the supplies. All of that is in the description box below the video so check it out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all very soon in another video. Bye!